with Visual Studio, one of the, th the first thing that we want to do is to get rid of bells and whistles. Now, you have it open. I'm going to open it on my computer, not on this one. This is Seneca computer. I'm going to go on my own. That is that one. OK? So I'm going to open Visual Studio. And after you follow the steps that I told you and you install Visual Studio on your home computers, this is what you're going to see. It's going to be here. You click it. It opens. OK? So there's no My Apps thingy anywhere. It's, it's going to be on your computer at home. All right? Now, on purpose, I'm going to add a few things that I do not want it to be open, say Server Explorer and Team Explorer and Class View, maybe, whatever, Class View. So you see all these things that is open? Close them all, which means the only thing you need is Solution Explorer. So Class View, close. Team Explorer, close. If you have several tabs, click on a tab and close that tab. So only sol solution, I see, Server Explorer, close. I want the only thing that is open is Solution Explorer and Start Page. Nothing else remain open. So see, you have 55,000 tabs underneath. Class View, you see that? Click, close. Close everything. The only thing you need to have open is Solution Explorer. And if you, by mistake, close Solution Explorer, you don't need to panic. Just go View, click on Solution Explorer, and it opens, OK? But as I mentioned, tabs, close, OK? Tab, OK, let me show you. I'm going go to go on school computer and show you this one. So if you look at the school computer now, where is the mouse? Yeah, you see that? Is it a school computer over there? Yeah, so you see over here it says Class View, close over here, close. You see over here it says Property Manager, close. Team Explorer, close. I want everything to be closed. The only thing that is open is Solution. Even the output window that you see over here, click on the pin so it goes down. So you have that one. And My Solution Explorer is at right. How do you move the Solution Explorer around? Drag it. It shows you over here in the middle where you want to put it. You can just come, hold here. You see that? And it's going to go at right. My Solution Explorer is at right. If you want to see exactly like mine, you can do it. If not, it doesn't matter. All right? Just drag it and bring it over here. Over here, over here. You see this? Come, come over it. Bring it down. Your mouse should come over it. You come. OK. Wait. You see? Bring the mouse over it and let go. Now it's fine. Now you close the start page. You went a little too far, but that's OK. <laughs> OK. Are we OK down to here now? All right? So why did I do that? Especially if you install a virtual machine at home or things like that. Every single task that is open, it's doing a process that you don't need to have it. OK, it makes your Visual Studio lighter, so it works better. Don't have 55,000 things open. It just doesn't make sense. And all those people who do not like to close their browsers and they don't even put their computer, restart their computer, and you see after like two weeks, they have 55,000 tabs open. Remember, every tab of browser that you open, you're essentially slicing your memory, OK? And your, pro your computer becomes slower and slower and slower and slower, especially if you're using Chrome. Every tab of Chrome is like a new browser that is open, all right? So although I like to have several tabs too, but there is a limit for things, right? Don't go too high. If you have a, if you have a Mac at home and you install a virtual machine, or a Linux at home and you have a virtual machine with Windows on it, Make sure that, um, because you have limited memory for it, uh, make sure you don't have too many things open. OK, back to my computer. Now, as I mentioned, Visual Studio is uh, 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 an IDE. I mentioned it the other day. It's called Integrated Development Environment. What does it do? It integrates all the things that you need to program and more. And the and more, I wanted to put double quotes. Why? Because it has so many bells and whistles that help you program and go through your code that makes it very easy. I'm going to go through creating a sample program. You're going to do it with me. And I'm going to write a, a little more complicated program to show you. But it doesn't mean that I'm teaching the concept. I'm going to teach all these things later. I just want to set the fear away so you can actually work with this thing. And then we're going to go back and start from scratch the next day you're coming in. All right? So the things that I'm going to do today, it's not that I'm teaching it. OK? I'm just giving you examples. Are we OK? Now, 
what I'm teaching now is to how to create a simple console application on this thing, and we're going to do it together. All right? So one of bad habits that I have, when I get excited, I, I talk too fast. So if you see I'm going bananas, stop me. OK? So I'm, hey, Barnett, you're going too fast. Slow down. I'm going to go deep breath, and I'm going to slow down. It's very important to remind me that. It subconsciously happens. My apologies to everyone. All right. <clears throat> so because this is an integrated development environment, it's not just a file and a compiler and compiler and it's running. It has lots of stuff that you need to do to be able to write a simple program, which means every single thing that you want to do in this tool, and most of the tools like this, they reside in a project. Now, if you see at the top of that window that I have at light, right, it says Solution Explorer. Now, what the devil is a solution? A solution is essentially a set of projects. What is it for? Why we have a set of projects? In real life, you don't write a program that prints 10 numbers and that's it, okay? In real life, you write applications that have many sides. Say you are a head of a programming team and uh, uh, you've been hired to do an e-commerce solution for a shoe company. If you want to do that, you have to have a point of sale pro program written for their stores. You have to have an inventory program written for the distribution. You have to have a, a web port written for the uh, online shopping cart, you have to have uh, ordering service for this and that. And all the things that you have, those are different projects, right? You put all these projects together under one solution called e-commerce, OK? That's why we have a solution explorer. And remember I told you working with Visual Studio in our level is like going shopping for a carton of milk with a 20-ton truck? That's what it is. OK? That's why we have to learn how to sim make things simple and create the simplest thing possible so all the bells and whistles that are needed for complicated programs are set aside. Did I make sense now to the point, or I put everybody in coma? No? We're good? All right. How do we do this? First thing you do, you click on File, New, and Project. If you look at right side of Project, there are a few things written over there. You see it says Control Shift plus N, OK? It means because you do lots of project creation and stuff like that, instead of working with the mouse, you can simply hold Control Shift and hit N, and a new project is going to get created. And the dialog box is going to come up for it. So you have two choices. Look at all the stuff that you are doing. Anything that has something at right side, it's a shortcut key for that. Learn to use those things, OK? Number two, R-E-A-D. What does it mean? Read everything. If there is a message, don't just hit Enter and get rid of it. Read the damn thing. See what does it say so you don't have to do it again. We're going to come to a point you'll see when you want to compile. It brings a dialog box that says, your project is out of date. Would you like to compile it? So you have yes, no, cancel, and underneath there's a little check mark that says, don't show this again, OK? And I want to click that one. Students keep hitting that thing every single time for four semesters, and they don't check that mark, so it doesn't show the bloody message again. So please, 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 OK? Read the messages that you get. I would really appreciate that. It makes your life easy. It makes my life easy. It makes everybody's life be beautiful. So click on Project, and it opens this beautiful dialog box over here. Now, as you see, when you open, probably the third option is available for you. Is that correct? Yes. OK, we do not need to. You went further of me. Y yes. You clicked on something that you shouldn't have had. OK, which means we pause. That's why I said when we are actually, sorry, don't get embarrassed. Everybody does that. Uh, uh, so because I just looked at it, and I see 55,000 files are here as if he wants to write a compiler. But uh, close this one, close solution. Now we start again. File, new project, and wait for me. All right, thank you very much. OK, so again, don't go ahead of the thing and wait for me. Now, you see it says create directory for solution. 
This means you are creating an e-commerce system, are you? No, this has to always be unchecked. Otherwise it creates extra unnecessary directory that you don't need. That has to be unchecked. Number two, a browse. Browse takes you to the directory in which you want to have the project in. I'm hoping that you're gonna create a directory called IPC144. In that one, you wanna create a workshop directory, I don't know, study directory, places that you wanna put different directories so you're organized. So you just don't click OK. Check where you wanna go. On your computers, there is a, there is a hard drive called T, Thaw Space. That's a temporary drive that is created virtually so you can put your stuff in it, okay? So you can actually go over there and create it over there. So you create on browse, then in here, select T drive and only T. So let me just show it to you on this computer so you see what I mean. So essentially, when you go file new project, three years later, it actually creates it. You uncheck this one, you browse, and you select T, thaw space. You see that? And this one is empty. Look at it. Is yours empty? No, some of them, these are, these are fault of the students who left it over there. Careful. If you put stuff on your computer and leave and do not delete it, say you do assignment two, perfectly. You put it over there, you finish it or do whatever you want to do, you forget to wipe it out. Another student comes and says, ha ha, somebody wrote assignment number two for me. Takes it up, writes his own name on it, hand it to me. You get zero, he's going to get zero because it's cheating. He doesn't know who, who he got it from, right? So be extremely careful. You have to own your own data. Having a memory stick is a very good idea, okay, to actually create your stuff in it. So you can do that if you want. And if you are doing it, please don't go get it from dollar store. Those are very, very, very slow memory sticks. You put it in here, you compile something, you have to go grab a coffee and come back, okay? Get, it's not very expensive. You can, for 20 bucks you can, and don't get a 250 gig memory stick. Believe me, 16 gigs is enough for the whole study in Seneca College, okay? Of course, you're not gonna put Lord of the Rings on it, all different versions of it, just your, for your study. So a memory stick is a good idea. And later on, if you're smart enough, you're gonna open up an account on GitHub, so you're completely off all these things, and you're gonna have all your stuff on GitHub. Anyways, so, now use T, all right? So you are, you're gonna select T, and you go select folder, yeah, where is the mouse? Select folder, and then for console application that you have over here, you're gonna actually, uh, actually let's, uh, yeah, you go right over there, um, we are section I, right? So write, write I demo. You see I is capital, you see D is capital, and then EMO. Windows compiler suffers from backwards compatibility to dinosaur's time, which means this operating system is not case sensitive. If ID demo, I demo that I have written over here is all lowercase, it's the same for it with uppercase. But as soon as you move this to matrix, a more advanced operating system, then capital I and lowercase i are two different things, and that's where you're gonna have trouble. Because of that, obsessively follow the things that I tell you. If it's capital I, capital D, EMO, write it that way. Make sure it's not lowercase. And still don't do anything. You'll have to wait. And the next thing you need to do is to select what you want to create in this project. Go click on Windows Desktop, and then you'll see over here it says Windows Desktop Wizard. That's what you want to clear, you create. If you have all these things set, you can click on OK and then wait. All right? So again, Desktop Wizard, name is iDemo, location is T column backslash. You can click on OK and wait for me. I'm going to do that on my own computer. My own computer, where's my, oh, there you go. So again, now I'm not gonna use T. I'm gonna use the repository for GitHub so I can post it for you. So I'm gonna go to SII, select folder, and I'm gonna call it 01. 
demo because I want automatically all the, all the things that I do for you get sorted by name. So that's going to be 01 demo. And as you see, I have desktop, desktop wizard, I demo, my directory is selected. I'll click OK. After you click OK, this dialog box open. First, uncheck everything. If you have anything open, uncheck them all. And the only thing you need is empty project, and that's it. So if everything's unchecked, not dimmed, it has to be unchecked, and then empty project is checked, and that one is console application, obviously it is, you click on OK, and you wait for me. And three years later, four years later, something like this is going to happen. You have the same thing? You do? Are we OK? You see that? You don't see that? I'm coming. That's why we are in lab. You have to make mistake if you don't. No, because you have to extend Windows Desktop, Wizard, Dem I capital, D capital. EMO, and you're in business now. Click OK, absolutely no problem. Uncheck this one, check this one, everything's good. OK, and wait for me. You're good, you're good, you're good. Black and good. <coughs> huh? Pardon me? It shows the fire here. Is that OK? Oh, yeah. You just do like this, it goes away. There you go. It actually makes that noise too. You're good. You're good. We are all OK. <clears throat> all right. Now, for some reason, students are obsessed by copying five different versions of their assignment and worked on all of them at, at once, and at the end, submit the wrong one. I don't know why. That happens 55,000 times every semester. How do we recognize which project is open in here on the hard drive? OK, to make sure we are submitting the right thing. Right click on that demo thingy that you see up there. And right at the, end, at the bottom of the menu that opens, there is something says, open folder in File Explorer. You see that? Click on that one. Click, click, click. Click on that one, and the Explorer opens. First of all, minimize it so it's a small thing. I want you to be able to see. Uh, so minimize, not minimize, I mean uh, make the window smaller. It just opens the whole thing. Just make it smaller so we can compare things. Now if we actually look at this, take a look. This is where the stuff are cre created, and this one is what I have, right? Now take a look. In here, I have source files directory, resource files, header files, external dependencies, references. Do you see anything like that over there? Nope. There is nothing there. These directories, these folders, are virtual. They are just organization inside the IDE. Where the information are th of those things are kept, there are two files. And those are the only two files you need to carry around to carry your structure of your solution and project with you. Those two files are called vcxproj and vcxproj filters. OK? You can see those two things. And of course, you're going to create lots of files. So any file that you create, you carry with you. With these two, rest of the stuff, ignore, as if they don't exist. You don't need them. They are temporary files. Any place you reopen your thing with Visual Studio, they get recreated. Just ignore them and just carry the things that you want with you. Are we OK with this? OK, now, <clears throat> if you buy your computer, when you buy your computer or you get a default installation of Windows 10, for some reason, Microsoft is obsessed with hiding things and then put a comment at left side. Take a look. In here, it's, so what you buy is actually this. Let me just show you. This is what you see. You see that? Demo and demo VCX proj? It shows you this way. Of course, your computers are not going to show that because they are set up in school. These are set up for programmers. Okay? 
your computer is going to show that. And when I tell you extension is VCXProj and VCXProj filters, you're going to tell me I don't have such thing. As a programmer, you need to see the file as whole. So if you have a Windows computer at home, this is what you need to do. You need to click on view, then click on top option, top option, top of the option, not the option itself. See, I'm even abbre abbreviating stuff, top option. Okay, so top of the option, and it opens a dialog box. Click on view, make sure you uncheck hide extensions for known types. Click apply, and then apply to folders. Don't worry about this. It's being recorded, and you're going to see it at home, so you can actually follow it at home. OK, now if I click OK, it actually shows the extensions as whole. So I know it's uh, uh, demo VCX proj and demo VCX proj, fix, <coughs> VCX proj filters. Those are the ones that I have to carry around with me. Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Are we OK three? Sold. Let's go to the next one. All right. Now that I know what it is, I'm just going to minimize this, not close, because I want to look at it later on. OK? Or actually, let's close it so we can reopen it and remember how we reopened it. All right? So let's close it. Now, I want you to right click on source files, click Add, and New Item, and wait for me. Now, the question is this. Actually, that's a good question for a quiz the next day you're coming in. How do I create a new item with keyboard? How do I do that? Control Shift A, right? So if you want to create a new item, you could have simply said Control Shift and press the A instead of going through this mouse thingy, OK? I'm not going to ask that question in quiz. Don't worry. That's very, very crude if I do that, OK? I don't want to do that, OK? But just remember that you can do all these things. Are we OK? Now click on Add, I add New Item and wait for me. This opens. And as you see, it has several options, all right? This opens, and it has several options. You could go in the menu at left and select on code because we want to write a code, right? You don't need to do that, really. All you need to do is to write over here what do you want. But let's, for the heck of it, just click on code, and you're going to see what, you, what you're going to see at right is going to be exactly the same thing. So click on code, and you'll see just um, gives you options of types of files. You see that? Now, all the things that you see are C++. What the heck? It's a C class. Why we are doing C++? C++ is a superset of C language. OK? As I mentioned, first Earth got cold, and then dinosaurs came and ate too much. They died. And then the programmers came and created C language, right? After the C language got created, they added one feature to it called object orientation. They called the language C++. It means it has one extra feature to C, OK? So C++ has a C compiler in its belly. It can compile all C codes perfectly. We are not going to write any C++ code. We are using the C compiler within this thing. They didn't need to add a C compiler because it has a C++ compiler. Okay? That's why if you want to create a file over here for C, down here when it says name, you have to put the name, but the extension of the file should be C, not CPP. You see this? It says source.cpp. We're going to change that. So write that one, demo test. Demo is our lowercase. T is capitalized. So it's like this, right? I do this on purpose. I just could write test. I just want to make sure that you're doing it right. You, you pay attention to what you write. So you write demo, our lowercase, and you put test and then dot .c. So the name of the file that you are creating is demo test. Dot C. This type of writing is called camel notation because it's big and small. Big and small is like the, you know, the camels, the humps on the back of the camel. So demo and T is capital demo test dot C. Then you can click on OK and wait. Sorry, click on add. 
At left side, you're going to see that a file is created um, called demo.c. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. Let's write the C program together. All right? <clears throat> include. But we started with a hashtag. Number sign include. It means I'm telling to the compiler, hey, I'm writing something and I want something to get included. But take a look. As I type in, down there it shows me what are the options in C language we have. It actually shows, do you want to type include? Press tab and it's going to complete it for you. That's the reason we call this an IDE. It helps you write code and don't misspell things. So things that are known, it tells you what they are. So now I'm going to say in, and I'm going to press tab, and it writes include for me. Now I'm going to put space, and I'm going to put less than sign. It knows any less than sign that comes in include requires a, a greater than sign to close it in brackets. So automatically it adds the second one. Watch me, brr, watch, brr, reboot. What we want to add over here and include to our program is standard input output library so we can show stuff on the screen. C, as I told you, is a very simple program. It only has 13 keywords, it's 13 main things that it can do. I don't know, maybe it was 11, 13, very few, less than 20, okay? C language doesn't even know how to show something on a screen or read something from a keyboard. All those things has to be added to it. And that's why we are including standard input output header file to it. So I'm saying include stdio.h. Please type std and you'll see what's going to come up. OK? And as you see, there are several standard stuff. But you want std and to wrap io.h. You see that? And that's what you're going to include. Hit enter and go to new line. All right? So now I included the library and I, that this, pro, this file of mine is capable of calling features for input and output, or we call it functions for input and output. So we're going to start our most important function of all times. C language is a collection of functions. That's how it works. OK? Whenever you are doing something, you have small routines that you pull them all together, right? If you want to, I don't know, make different types of pasta, they're going to say, make the pasta with this, then add this sauce to it. The second one, make this pasta and add the other sauce to it. So you're going to have two different types of pasta. One is fettuccine alfredo, the other one is pasta and meatballs, right? So the base of pasta, they're going to explain only once. The next time you want to make pasta, you're going to say, make that pasta, but add this one instead. So they don't keep repeating the things that are already there. This is what we call functions in C language. But because there are 55 million functions in C language, one of them is special. That's where everything begins. I have to mention from where do I begin stuff, right? That that function is called main. And that main returns an integer. What does it mean? I don't care. I just do it. And later on, I'm going to find out. So you start by typing I, N, T, and then space. And that means integer. And then you name the function. The function is called main. And this function does not accept, does, does not want anything. That's why we put void in its entry. The entry of a function, the place that function can accept stuff, that's where it is. That's where it returns stuff. Remember math? You loved it, didn't you? Functions, right? Functions, they had parentheses in front of it. You put stuff in it. It did something and returned something. That's exactly what it is. But the difference is that it just doesn't do calculation. It, uh, it does stuff, OK? That's the difference between computer programming and math. In math, you have y is equal to fx. You put something in an x, and y comes out, and nothing happens. <laughs> OK, you just do some calculation. In computer science, you have that function. It still receives something and returns something. But through this thing, it jumps out and, I don't know, um, does something on a screen for you, right? So this uh, <coughs> function of mine 
It's int main void. It means it returns an integer. It is supposed to return an integer, and it receives nothing. So what it's going to return, it's not important for us. So I'm going to say, when you are done, return 0. Why? Because the sky is high. All right? This is the smallest C program that you can write and execute. You have just written a function called main, which means the main thing that is supposed to happen. And you're going to say, I want nothing to happen, because you didn't write anything over there. You see that 1, 2, 3, 4? Those are the sequence of the stuff that are happening. Task oriented. Number one, it's going to include standard input output. Number two, it's going to start function main. Number three, it's going to return 0 to I don't know where, somewhere. And number four, program ends. Okay? How to execute this program? Hold the control key and press F5. You're going to see a dialog box. You see that? <laughs> Read it. At the end, it says, do not show this again. And then click on yes. And then wait for me. Yes. Yes. All right? So it's going to compile that program. And it's going to execute it and do absolutely nothing. Because that's our program is, right? Yay! We have written our first program. A program that does nothing. All right? Yes. And it's amazing that that's going to be trouble. Yes? It says that's an error. <laughs> you have an error in nothing? Let's see. Because you have an item of CPP, you, have, you didn't follow the things that I told you. You actually didn't put empty. You didn't click empty. So we have to close this and restart from scratch. Take a look at it. You see the files that I have in my solution? Mm -hmm. Take a look at you. you. Do they look the same? Uh, no. no. OK. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to go file, close solution, file, new project, desktop, Windows desktop, T, browse, delete the item that you created. Select folder again. Oh. Write item over here again. Oh. Click OK. You forgot to do this. And then you forgot to do this. OK, now you go click OK. And three years later, you have this. Now you can actually go add new item. And that was the demo test that we had. Dot C and include standard input output dot H and int main void and return. Oh, see, even I'm making a mistake. Return zero. And control F5. That's it. All right, perfect. All right, are we okay? Are we okay? Yes. All right. Huh. That's new. Yada, yada, yada is not record as an internal, external thing. New. No, that's bad. What's going on here? Unexpected end of file. Did you, did you have stuff over here and you deleted them? No. Okay, there you go. That's why. File, close solution. File, new project. Desktop wizard, browse. I don't want to type. Copy, delete. Select folder. I demo. Okay. You forgot to do this. Yeah. An empty project. 
OK. And now add new item demo test. Let's see. And include standard input output dot h int main void return zero and control f5 and that's that okay i am happy that few people had problem what i wanted to say was that when I told you it's absolute and you have to absolutely do what I'm asking you to do, you have to do that. Now, close the, the execution window that command.dxt that opened. Now, I want you to tell you what is the difference between a program you have on your screen and what I have on a screen, if there is any difference. I want somebody to tell me. What's the difference between your program and mine? What's the difference between a program that you wrote and what I wrote? Ah, I see two differences over there. How about you? Um, you didn't save yours. No, no, no. <laughs> you didn't save yours. So that's space. smart. Yes, you have one extra space at line two that I don't have. And you have four spaces for your tab. I have two. Right? OK, see, very small things. Take a look at it. Where is R over here? Under M, correct? Where is my R? Under T. It's not a mistake. Don't be mistaken. I just want you to appreciate when I say something is different, what do I mean? OK? So when I tell you create a project and this is what you have, you see there is some extra files. Don't think you can delete them and it's going to be OK. I'm just going to remove them. It's gonna, he's not going to know it. <laughs> That's not going to happen. It's going to go back. OK? Now, I want to tell you, how can you make it at home so it actually works like this? When you hit Enter, it puts four spaces over there. And it actually adds a tab, a backslash T, that I told you it's bad, remember? No one likes tab in their source code. How can we actually set this one so it doesn't have tab in it? And automatically puts, when I put a new statement, indents it properly to the proper size. On your Visual Studio, click on Tools, then Options, and this window opens. Tools and options. OK. After doing that, I'm going to ask you to expand and collapse. What does it mean? When I say collapse, this is a category. There are lots of subcategories over here. To collapse it is to click at left side, and it collapses. Did you see? Expand it means this. Collapse means this. Now, collapse the environment, OK? And expand text editor. I want you to collapse environment and expand text editor. And wait for me. Perfect. And then click on all language uh, and expand all languages. <clears throat> so expand text editor, expand all languages, and then click on tabs. Take a look at my tab settings. It's two and two and insert spaces, which means I'm not going to keep any tabs in my code. Any tab that I have, it's going to convert, convert it to spaces automatically. You can set it over here to two just to see what happens. Two and two, and then click on OK, and then look at your code. Wow, it takes a long time. You see, it actually adjusts it. Now it becomes like mine. And every time you're adding something, from now on, it's going to be two spaces. So at home, find whatever you like. If you want four spaces, fine. Two spaces, fine, as long as you are consistent. When you are giving me a program, if I see some of them are indented four, the other one indented three, and then indented two, I'll resubmit your code. It's extremely important to have neat code handed in. OK? Sloppy code is never accepted. It's, I cannot put em enough emphasis on that. When you get hired some pl in some place, they give you a 500 pages manual of what is our coding style. What are the name of the variables? How do we do spacing? How do we write 
our functions? How do we comment our code? And if you don't do that, even if you have the most beautiful genius program written ever in the history of world, they reject it. Because the person who's going to later on sit and try to debug your code won't be able to do it properly because it doesn't follow the same style. Not following the same style is as if you're walking with unequal steps. Try it once. Especially do it in front of the mirror, you're going to laugh for half an hour. Try to walk with unequal steps. Try it at home. Seriously, I'm not going to do it now because you're going to laugh at me. All right? Walk unequal steps. Big, small, short, small, do that. E ooh. See what you're going to look like. You're going to look like a. I'm not going to miss. Beep. Okay? So, all right? That's what's going to happen to your eyes when you are looking at someone's code whose style is not proper. You will not notice it. When your eye is following your code and ev all the spaces are the same, your eye expects where the next one is, so it immediately jumps over there. And when the code is there, it continues reading. If your code is not in a good style, when your eye is following it, every single jump that it does, it has to do a small search to focus and see where is the next thing. And it gives you a headache that you have never experienced in your lifetime. Okay? And you're going to wear glasses this thick because every single minute your eye is trying to do something and it gets tired. Okay? A coding style is extremely important. If you are at a company, they force you to do something, so you've got to follow. I wanted to do that. I've done it several times. I'm going to do another approach this semester. I'm going to say, have your own style, but be consistent on what you're doing. If you get my code, and my code is not the same as your style, you have to change the style of my, of my code to your own. Or follow my style. You have two choices. It cannot be two different styles in the same code. Remember that. Are we okay with this? All right. So, back in business. And I hear somebody talking. Please stop. All right. Now we're going to add one more command. We're going to say print formatted, print F, and I'm going to open a parenthesis and pass a string to it. And the string that I'm passing into will be, what do I say? As I mentioned in the other class, that cliche. So, uh, see, that's the. <laughs> Now I cannot, I cannot decide what to say. In the other class, we go here. We're not going to go here. So, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Okay? Exclamation mark, new line. And then at the end, semicolon. All right? You see I put backslash n. Whenever in a string, string, you know what a string is. String is a statement that you write. A string is always put between two double quotes. It means it's a statement that you want to do something with it. Okay? In a statement, when you have a backslash, it means the letter in front of it doesn't mean what it means. It means something that you have to interpret. So backslash, if it calls N afterwards, it means new line. So it means print that thing and an exclamation mark, then go to new line. All right? I could have had backslash T. It means jump to next tab position. I could have said backslash B, it means go backwards. I could have said backslash A, that's alarm. It's going to say beep. Okay, I could have done that. So depending on what you do, you can do that. And because backslash means an escape sequence, if you actually want to print a backslash, you have to put two backslashes back to back. Okay, two backslashes back to back means one backslash. All right, so run that, control F5. And this time, I want you to click on debug and run start without debugging. Instead of Control F5, click on Debug and start without. Look at, look at the shortcut key for Start Without Debugging. It's Control F5. You've already done that. Okay? I just want you to see what happens. Now run it. Congratulations. You have written your first C program. Dear one, you have two extra spaces over there, one space over here. Up, perfect. And you have one over there extra. As you saw, no, 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 keep going, keep going. Up, 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 up. 
Ah, that's one more. Perfect. Okay. It works. As you saw, it works. So I want to show you something. OK? You see this program? Control F5. It runs. But it's awful. OK? Because something runs, it doesn't mean it's correct. OK? It's a good idea. It's called a free format language. A free format language, it means one space could be 50. It doesn't make any difference. Why they added this capability? So you can format your language properly. Free format. It doesn't mean go bananas. It means have a format, but it's free how it's going to be. All right? So try to not to be sloppy in your code. OK? Try to write it organized right from the scratch. The people who, especially when I approach their things, and I see the intention is bananas, everything's going different. It's like, don't worry. When I submit it, I'm going to fix it. No. I want you to write it properly so you see what you're coding. It's extremely important to write organize right from the beginning. Don't write the crappy code and then fix it. Write the good code right from the beginning. Like that, you can see your mistakes, and you can find it very easily. All right? <clears throat> So let's go back up. Control Z, undo stuff. It's going to do undo. Oh my god, what did I do? All right. Now remove the semicolon at the end of printf and do Control F5 again. <clears throat> what do you see? Control F5. What does it say? There were build errors, yada, yada, yada. Run the last successful? No, don't. You can say, don't show this again. No. When it's an error, I want to see the error. I don't want to ask successful things. So you're going to say no. And it actually shows you an error message. You see that expected a semicolon. You see that underneath? You click on it, and it's going to bring you exactly where it came some. It saw something that is not a semicolon. So somewhere before the cursor over here, there must be a semicolon. It actually tells where it is. It's here, so I'm going to put it on, and now it's going to come back in. Now, IntelliSense kind of compiles it as you go through. See when I remove the semicolon, what happens? Come on. You see, return has a red thingy underneath. It means that's an unexpected thing. And if you bring it over here, it tells you what's going on. So IntelliSense compiles it even before you compile it. All right? It's a very uh, useful thing. Are we OK down to here? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Done. Now, how? Uh, there's one more thing that you need to add at the beginning of the file. Now, to actually do it correctly, because I always forget uh, what the spelling of it is, and I make a mistake, I just want to make sure it's OK. So I'm going to go cheat, take it from somewhere else. Let's go to North Archive here and open something somewhere. No, not this one. <laughs> that's, I opened the worst thing that I could open, not that one. Um, that's the good one. There you go. This is the one. Hashtag, number sign, secure, CRT, secure, no warnings. OK? For some, for some reason that you don't, that I'm not going to explain, I'm going to, let me just, um, new versions of C language is coming up. And C language is a very powerful language. You can do anything you want with it. Uh, you can literally break the operating system that you're on. Linux operating system is written in C language. 
Okay? So it's a very powerful language. Because of that fact, you can shoot yourself in a foot very easily. That's why they keep adding stuff to it to make sure mistakes are the least amount of possible, the least amount that can be. Because of that, the old input-output functions who were written in standard input-output header file are considered unsecure now. But there is no way to learn the language without using those functions. We have to. So we have to add that at the top of any place that we are using any uh, standard input-output entry to make sure it works. Otherwise, it's going to give you a compiler. That tells the compiler, hey, compiler, no warnings for secure stuff. I know what's going on. OK, let them be. We could have set this one in the compiler itself, but we don't want to fiddle with the compiler. So we add that one. The, anything that starts with a hashtag, you're actually talking to the compiler to do something before compiling your code. So you are saying, first of all, know that there is no warnings for uh, input output secure stuff. Secondly, I want you to include the standard input output library so I can print stuff and I can read stuff. Okay? Now, this code that I have, I want to show you something. What happens to it? So anytime that I'm doing something on a computer, what I'll do, I'll go. <clears throat> so I want to see where is this thing. I right click on demo. I'll go open in File Explorer. Do it now. You will see that the Explorer that opens, a debug directory is added. If you open that debug directory, you have lots of stuff in it. If you have no idea what is that, and we don't need to know what are those things for now. Go back to the demo directory. If you want to put this thing on your memory stick and open it up somewhere else, the only three files, the only files that you need is the source file you have written, vcxproj and vcxproj filters. Take this three, put it on a memory stick, go somewhere else that has memory, Visual Studio. If you double click on vcxproj, it's going to open up Visual Studio with the solution ready for you to continue your work. You don't need to carry anything else. Remember that. All right? It's very important. So you don't have to carry all the garbage around. Or if you want to email it to someone, take these three, add it to a zip file, and just send those. So if you have a problem and you want me to, 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 to see what's wrong with your program, that's what you do. You get cproj C -pro, C filters, your source files, you add them to a zip file, and you send them to me. I unzip it and take a look at it. All right? Or even better, when you create a repository on your GitHub account, and you send me the link, and I just go over there, and I pull it. Again, I'm just telling you about these GitHub stuff so you get encouraged and go read it, okay? There is no need for you to do it. Every single thing that you have over here, you can download automatically. You have, you have no need for any Git knowledge. I'm just letting you know, so it's a good idea to start from now. So what do I do? Take a look. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to right-click on this demo thingy, and I'm going to say Tortoise Git Add. And in, in Git, I specifically mentioned that all those files are garbage. I want only the important ones. So it, it automatically submits only the things that are needed. You see? It's only going VCH process filters and C and ignores everything else. Now I click OK. So it's going to say add it. Now I'm going to say commit it to the repository on my computer. So it actually adds it to the repository so it can keep track of changes for future. Now I'm going to say now that you have committed this thing, oh, well, how do I commit it? What is this commit? I'm going to say uh, demo program, first demo, first C demo program, first C demo program. Now I'm going to click on commit. Now it's added to this. Because I, I cloned the repository on GitHub on this computer and I added to that one, I can say, push it back to the original place where I get all these things from. As soon as I do push, and I'll do OK, it's going to send everything back up to GitHub. So what happens is that you go home, you go to GitHub, you simply go to your section, and you'll see there is a 01 demo over there. You open it up, you'll see there is demo test, 
and you can look at the source code. Or you can simply go over here, even if you don't have Git, you can click over here and say download zip. So it packs all the repository with everything that is in a zip file. You expand it and you can get whatever you have. Or you look at the video that I have and see how to install Git and Tortoise Git to only get changes which means you can clone this once on your computer at home. Every time I have a new lecture, you go over there, you say, git pull. It only gets the new stuff and adds it to your computer. So you have the same thing and you keep updating it with the code that I have. And anytime everything goes back and you see there's an error, just put them aside, clone it again. As simple as that, all right? I don't want you to know git in deeply, but it's a good idea to know it. All right, so that's, that. that's how the notes are gonna be up there, all right? Again, remember to see this video, how to download and install. See this video, installing Git on Windows 10, and install it toward this Git. These are important stuff to know. <clears throat> All right, so that's that. Back to Visual Studio and the question. Any questions down to this point? Yes. How do I add comments? Two slashes. Two slashes and right, right. So there are two different kinds. Well, again, this is not teaching. Uh, I'm going to talk about all these things later. But since you asked, so I want to comment what this line does. I'm going to put two slashes over here and say, prints, hello, everyone. So compiler ignores anything that comes after two slashes. Also, this is C++ method that was added to C later. C language adds a comment like this. So you, you specify the beginning at the end. Slash star and star slash. Between these two, anything you put is a comment. So you can actually do like this. And I'm going to say prevents or uh, 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 disable, uh, what do I say, uh, remove error and warning on standard input output input functions. So that becomes the comment for this one. If you wanted to put in front of it using C style, you can do this. No errors on input functions. There you go. So I just added few comments, okay? That's how you add comments. Don't overdo comments. Add the comments to the parts that are a little vague. Like when you write a program and you see, okay, this part is not clear what's happening, so I'm gonna put a comment. Don't write everything, like opening a curly bracket, closing a curly bracket, putting a semicolon. Don't put comments like that, okay? Put comments in a place that when somebody is walking through it, can easily understand how things happen, all right? Don't overdo it. Oh, one important thing I'm going to mention later on, because you haven't done any workshops here to submit. At the top of every single document that you have, you have to have your information. So you put a comment at the top, student, num student name, this student number, and what is this file is doing, and all those stuff. So it's kind of your signature on your file. Are we OK down to here? Are we OK one, two, break? Please remind me to resume recording after I come back. One of the most what, like common mistakes that I do, that I come back and I forget to resume recording. And it becomes half a lecture. <laughs> OK, I'm going to pause recording now. When I come back, please remind me to resume. See what I'm saying? Just to uh, tell you how do we uh, get stuff into the program, I'm just going to write a quick thing over here and show you what it is. OK, it's very simple. So. Uh, it's, again, it's not teaching it. We're going to go through it later on. If I want to do another one, another thing in here, I cannot have two mains in a, in a program. So I have to remove this from the project and add another one. So I'm going to remove. Make sure I don't delete it. I just say remove. So it stays on a hard drive, but it's removed from the project. Now I'll new, add a new one. Add a new item. I'm going to call it 02 
or number of beers. Number of beers. So in this program, you're going to tell how many packs of beers you got, and it's going to tell you uh, how many actually cans of beer you have, OK? So now the first thing I need to do is to add those secure schmecure thingy these. So I'll add those. Now I'm going to say uh, uh, int. You don't need to do this. Again, this is not teaching. This is just uh, satisfy the, secure, the, 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 the curiosity of how the devil you read stuff and you put. So I'm just going to do it very quickly. OK? <clears throat> so I'm going to get a few packs of beer. So I'm going to say how many packs of beer you got to get. So I need to know how many packs. How many packs is a number? One, two, three, four, five. It's an integer number, right? So I'm going to say I want an integer, and I'm going to call it packs. OK? And let's assume all the packs in the world have 12 beers in it and not more. <laughs> we don't have packs of 24. OK, boxes of 24. It's just that one. So what I'm going to do over here is say printf, how many packs of or boxes of beer you got? Beer you got. And I'll put a space in front of it. So that's where I'm asking. I don't go to new line because I want to answer it in front of it. OK? And then after that, after they, after they do it, I want to get it from them. So I'm going to say scan the keyboard formatted for an integer and put that integer into address of packs. I know you have no idea what I'm talking about, but just listen to me and try to follow. OK? Remember I told you that C language is English language, but when it comes to it, you look at it and say, what the heck is that? That's not English. That's what I'm talking about. So when I write scanf percent %d ampersand pack, this is what I say. Scan formatted an integer and put it in address of packs. So if I told you, what is the sign for address, what would you say? Loud. Ampersand. ampersand. From now on, if anybody sees an ampersand and calls it ampersand, I'm going to kill you. An ampersand is called address of. Always say what the thing means. That helps you understand it. If you just say over here, scanf, double quote, percent D, double quote, comma, ampersand, packs, that doesn't mean anything. But if I say scan an integer and put it in address of packs, that I understand. OK? And then, I want to see how many cans of beer I have. So I'm going to say printf, you got percent %d, this many, it's an integer, cans of, if I can type it, beer. And now I go to new line. And in here, I'm going to say packs multiply by 12, OK? So what happens over here is this. It first prints how many, how many uh, boxes of beer you got. I'm going to say three. Then it's going to say you got. Then it puts a placeholder. An integer is supposed to be printed. What, print, what integer? This. And I said three, right? Three multiplied by 12 is 36. So it prints 36 cans of beer. OK, let's do it. So I'm going to run the program. Control F5, and this is what I'm going to see. How many boxes of beer you got? I'm going to say three. You got 36 cans of beer. I run it again. Control F5. How many boxes of beer you got? I'm going to say eight. Now it's going to say you have 96 cans of beer, right? So essentially, I wrote a program that tells me actually how many cans of beer I got. And that's it. So again, from just by what I said, use your intelligence. And you know, percent %d is a placeholder for an integer. Any place you see a percent %d, it means you want to either read an integer or you want to print an integer. So it's a placeholder for what comes next. All right? Are we OK with this?
very simple and straightforward. We're going to go through all these things in detail. I just told you what I'm supposed to tell you a week and a half from now. So don't worry, you're not supposed to notice. I just give you a, gave you a demo of how things happen. And it's going to go on GitHub and you know what's going on. One more thing that I do not want you to follow, I just want you to see. We're going to talk about it in a lab when you're coming the next time. Is this, if you follow, fine. If you don't, don't. You don't have to keep, uh, uh, keep up with me. If you can click on start and over here type putty to find where putty is or in the application thingy that you have and open up putty. Putty is a terminal with which you can connect to a remote Linux computer. I'm going to put over here matrix dot Seneca college dot CA. I'm going to log in as F Soleimanlu. That is my student account. Then in here, I'm going to say uh, my password. In a, in a command line interface, no news is good news. Remember that. Okay? Now in here, I want to create a file and run the same program that I had and see how it works. So I'm going to say nano. Nano is a name of a program that creates text files. You can actually edit in it. And I'm going to say over here, uh, what was that? Uh, number of beer.c. The name is different with that one, but it doesn't, that doesn't matter. Hit enter. So it actually creates the file for me. And then I want to write everything that I have in there. So I'll write in it. Okay? And then I'll go control X to get out. It's going to say, you want to save the changes? I'm going to say yes and hit enter and I'm done. Now if I say cat, it means display the content of. I have no idea why they call it cat, but hey, that shows what is the content of that one. You see it's text. It's not the bells and whistles of an IDE anymore. Now I want to compile it. I'm going to say bring the GNU C compiler, GCC. Activate all the warnings. Compile number of beers dot C. And if it's successful, put it in an executable, call it NOB. <laughs> and I hit enter. No news is good news. It means it got compiled. I had no warnings. And now the name of the executable is NOB. So if I type NOB, and I hit enter, it's going to say, how many beers you got? I'm going to say five. It's going to say you got 60 cans of beer. I cannot do anything. It doesn't show me any of the things that the IDE does. Now look at the IDE. This just got executed, right? In IDE, I can press F10. If you look at it, debug, step into, step over. Step into, step over. Step into, it means go into the guts of the thing and run it. Step over, it means just run this statement. So I can run everything step by step. I can go F10, and as soon as I do that, it goes in debug mode. I'm going to take this to one side, take output to the other side, and I'm going to start doing it. So F10, I hit F10. You see that yellow thingy? That shows which line is getting executed. Whoop! It jumps and comes to printf. I'll bring my mouse in front of packs. What's the value inside the pack? Can anybody read me? I can't read it. It's too big. It's garbage. Why? Because I said, give me an integer. It put it somewhere in memory. Whatever was in memory at that location comes up. Garbage. I don't care. I'll leave it like that. Then it's going to print the, the, the message for me. Let's make it a, big, a little bigger so we can see. OK, now I'm going to execute that one. It's going to say, how many boxes of beer you got? Then it starts scanning. Still, there is garbage in here. It is not scanning it. It is about to. I press F10 again. If I press F11, it goes inside scanf to show me how scanf works. You don't want to do that. You've got to get scared and quit school. You don't want to do that. We just want to see scanf work by itself but as magic. It's in standard input output. I don't care. So I'm going to press F10, and now it's running the scanf. As you see, the cursor is blinking over there waiting for me. I'll put over here 10, and I hit Enter. Remember? 
when you hit enter, the information gets flown into the program. As soon as I do that, now I look at packs. Bring the mouse over packs. See what you see? 10. So it actually shows you what went in there. And then it comes over here, and I can actually change the size so I can see. Come on, you can do it. All right. Now I want to see. This is packs. That is 10. This is 12. I highlight them both, and it even does the multiplication. It's 120. And then I press F10 again, it executes, and I see how it, how it got executed. And it returns zero, and it finishes, and the program ends. I click on stop over here, and it stops the debugging for me. This type of luxury is not in a command line compiler. The system of debugging in a command line compiler is a completely different thing. There is one. It's, it's, it's for debugging, but it's very difficult to learn. We have to learn it long later. Visual Studio is giving you the power to go through your logic and code and see exactly what you're doing. So all these things that you see, I'm going to do it every single day in class. And I'm going to put the videos online. So you take a look at it, and you see how it works. And I hope you do the exact same thing at home. And like that, you're going to keep learning. It's as if somebody's teaching you how the program is getting executed. And you can see the flow of, of logic, and you can find your mistakes, and so on and so forth. Yes, sir. An integer. It's a placeholder. So you are essentially saying, you got, put an integer here, cans of beer, and whatever you put after is going to go in there. Again, I haven't even taught it yet. Wait, we're going to come to it soon. I, it's, it's not, this is not a lecture. This is just an example of what we're going to do later. It's one of those coming soon, coming attractions. That's what it is. Yes, what is the next question? Oh, no, 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 it means something. Percent D, it means integer. It means decimal, integer. It, is, it means integer. It stands for integer. OK? It's, there are serious things. There we have percent F, percent D, percent S, percent C. And each one of them means something. It comes after percent. OK? In an input or output function, in a printf or a scanf, percent D only has meaning either in a scanf or in a printf. We'll come to it soon. Again. I'm not teaching this now. I just give you an example, an overview of what we're going to do next. Your quiz for next one is going to be on week two. So that's what you are going to study. OK, week two. Any questions? Next time you have a quiz, it's going to be on week two. Why do you care? <laughs> it's going to be next lab. It's going to be next lab. Next lab. Quizzes are always in labs. I'm not going to waste the time of lecture for quizzes because we don't have that much time. All right? Any questions? Any questions one? Any questions two? Let's go home. Have a beautiful weekend, people.